and welcome back my lovelies to the blue rose respite oh i can't get enough of that weave shit <laughs> uh, i hope all of you guys have had a pretty great start to the week well it's hump day so pretty good midpoint to the week let's see who is in the early squad this evening we have shadow fang cat skater and mortimer how's it going guys great to see you Okie dokie wokey, let's get to it, shall we? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Ash continues to be in denial for a little while longer. So, where we last left off, we wrapped up Rebecca's story in which she had some close encounters with the strange ghost that seems to be haunting all of her friends and herself now. She attended a housewarming party held by the Wrights and some straight to the point talk with Luke. They're not friends by any extent, but there's a mutual tolerance between the two of them. So we now turn to Ashton's story in which he also attended the housewarming party, but he was, as of this morning, kick off, kicked off of the assignment of the murder investigations surrounding possibilities of ties to the rights and their new home. So, let us continue, shall we? Oh, 42 Celsius all day? Jesus Christ, like, I really hope you're managing to beat the heat as best you can, because, God, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. And hey, Cat, how's it going? Yes, sir. He cuts the line as soon as the words are out. You're off the case, Frey. Just like that. Funny why this still caught me off guard. I've discovered years ago how different the actual thing is. How far from reality everything I've believed in as a dreamy-eyed kid. There are no high-speed pursuits every day. No thrilling gunfights or exciting cases every step of the way. Only paperwork. Lots of red tape and dealing with the politics and bureaucracy. Yeah, that sounds about right. I've set out to change things, hoping it'll make things better for the people I care about. It ended up changing me instead. Serves me right for being too idealistic, I guess. This is probably the universe telling me that it's better to remain the skeptic I really am. Or not! A little bit of open-mindedness wouldn't go far. Now here I am, standing useless. Can't even do anything to but grip my teeth and kick the wall. But the bastard didn't even, even acknowledge my response. What did the poor wall ever do to you? Figures Rebecca would be the one to find me in this embarrassing state. Honestly, I don't like it when she sees me like this. Which seems to happen a lot, regardless of what I want. Rebecca, now's not a good time. The concern I expect from her when I turn isn't there, however. Instead, she just looks well. The storm I left brewing last night? It's right there on her face, ready to be unleashed. When is it ever a good time for you? You're always so busy with... with everything now. Hey, Denver, how's it going? Welcome back. Great to see you. Now I find you here, sneaking out without even bothering with a proper goodbye. Not even a word. Really, I'm starting to think you're just keeping me around for my couch and my cooking. Becca, it's not what you're thinking. I wasn't planning on sneaking out. I was going to say goodbye. I just had to take this call. Although, I'm not gonna lie, couch is great. 10 out of 10, would sleep again. Stop it with the jokes, Ashton. I'm not in the mood. Her bitterness is not lost on me, but at this point in our friendship, in our lives, how does she still expect me to answer that? What am I supposed to tell her now? Are you still mad about last night? Rebecca has infinite sources of anger. <laughs> she merely raises an eyebrow at me, which, to be honest, is all the response I need. Seeing her like this makes me believe those things Z-Man says. The part where Rebecca scares him. Sometimes. And I know I would pronounce it Z-Man, but come on, it, he says it's Z-Man, so I have to say Z certainly seen this more than once already. But the familiarity of it doesn't really take away from the downhill turn this conversation's starting to take. 
And then awkward cough serves it as a way to stall. Okay, of course you're still mad. But whatever happened last night, I really am sorry. I'll apologize as many times as you want. If you want, I'd even kneel or something. Ashton, an apology is nice and all, but that's not what I wanted to hear from you today. All right, fine, okay. Where do you want to start? Oh, I don't know. I've honestly lost track of it by our third trip to the buffet table. I wasn't... <sighs> the drive up there took a bit. Can you blame me if I wanted to grab some appetizers? Oh, come on, Ash. For the whole evening? For the whole party? Please, don't tell me that's all you did, because I've never known you as someone who pigs out. Really? You even took great lengths to avoid me. Should I also mention how you ignored Zack? Sometimes I get the feeling you don't want to be seen with us in public. Some friendship, huh? You know it's not like that. It's never going to be like that, Becca. I was... I'll ask this again. Just what were you up to during the party? What were you doing? That you couldn't even take two seconds to make time for your friends. I couldn't even look her in the eye. It wasn't that I wanted to avoid them. I did it to keep Zack safe, to keep Rebecca safe. I hope that your holiday is really, really good. It sucks that you have to wait six or seven weeks for it, but I hope it gets here soon. Just in case. Client or family friend. It was still a party hosted by a person of interest, by a man accused years ago of murdering a person's wife to get what he wanted. But then Chief showed up, Hannah Wright happened, and Luke Wright just can't be bothered to die peacefully somewhere. All of a sudden, none of my original reasons mattered. If I was found out, right then and there, hell, if Zack and Rebecca's connection with me was found out, who knows what might have happened. But Rebecca doesn't understand that doesn't understand what I can and can't say to keep them from harm. It's all in her eyes, the tight line of her lips, and her furrowed brows. The hurt. This day is just off to a wonderful start. First my case, now Becca. How do I even go about this? I think if you just like straight up say it's confidential rather than just lying to her face. Yeah. If, just be honest and say it's confidential. It's confidential, Rebecca. I wonder how many times I've told her that. And not just her. My dad, my mum, Zach, and even Isabella. How many times have I told them what essentially boiled down to mind your own business, to make sure they're all safe, to keep them out of danger? My job isn't a game. It isn't as glamorous as the television portrays it to be. I had thought so to too as a child. I was so clueless back then, wasn't I? But boy, did I learn. The good guys don't always win. Justice isn't always served. Investigation is not looking at a crime scene wants to get a eureka moment. It's sleepless nights at the crime labs with a tech guy. Several days wearing the same clothes with Chinese takeout stains because I'm staking out a place. It's frustration when bureaucracy hinders you from looking into a case any further when you know the suspect is guilty, but they get away scot-free on a technicality. It's seeing anger and pain and despair with every case. I know you have a mountain of questions, but I've told you this so many times before. I can't say much more than that. Still, the look on Rebecca's face, the resentment and the pain. It hurts me as well, to think that I'm the cause of that. It's a fam familiar one too, something I've seen a lot over the years. I wonder how long it'll take before Zack starts giving me the same one. Or until I've hurt Isabella in a way that any sincere apology won't ever be enough. What a mess. I'm a mess. It's the people close to me who have to suffer for it. I guess, if that's the case, there's nothing much I can do about it. You're off being a... what? A hero, I guess? But I shouldn't rag on you for that. I could never get used to how quick she just forgives me for whatever shitty thing I do. It's cause she's in love with you, damn it! Zack and Isabella too. They've all been patient with me, unlike I with them. I don't deserve any of them for the kind person that for the kind person I've turned out to be. I'm hardly a hero, Becca. I'm just Ash. I expect a retort, 
another one laced with bitterness. <laughs> Instead, she laughs, half-hearted, with barely a hint of cheer in it, but it's a laugh nevertheless. I honestly don't know what to make of that, what to do with myself upon hearing it. It's almost like the mere sound of it is meant to pierce. Well, the least you could have done is tell me. Maybe I could have helped, kept an ear and an eye out for you. I don't know. I could have been Irene Adler, maybe? Thank you so much for the host for all our kids. Appreciate it. Thank you. The smile doesn't quite reach her eyes, but the mask, she tries so hard for me. I give her a smile of my own, though I imagine it comes off as unenthusiastic as hers. It's far easier to slip back to banter when it's like this, to just brush off everything. At least this way, we wouldn't have to deal with awful things. The woman? Don't flatter yourself. Nancy Blue, more like. Her sidekick would beg to differ, Ashet. I couldn't stop a wry grin from forming in my lips. She probably still has the photo from that contest. Keeps it in her old diary. I never did find either of the two after I threatened to burn them. In the end, I just never brought it up again, hoping she'd just forget about the whole thing. But the small smile on her face says a lot. Those... Those were good times. A lot simpler. A lot more peaceful. Now... Now things have changed. We're no longer the same people we were as kids. Growing up together doesn't mean it always has to be just the two of us in the first place. Oops. It's a dumb notion to believe in, when nothing ever remains constant. Things will inevitably change through the years. In fact, it already has long ago, not just with the people we allowed into our respective lives, but also with us, as people, as friends. It really does get complicated as we get older, doesn't it? Not everything has to be, though. Even if it's in the form of a promise, I have no idea when I'll be able to fulfill. I swear, I'll explain when it's all over. Silence afterwards brings an even heavier air between us. Some thing that Rebecca, thankfully, doesn't allow to linger more than necessary. I suppose you have to go now, huh? The situation's already awkward as it is. Dragging this out will only make it more... what? Difficult? Messed up? As if it isn't already. Back to your case again? I don't really have to. I have no case. As far as the job is concerned, I have the weekend off until I have to report to Chief on Monday. Yeah, hang in there, Denvro. God, it sounds so insanely busy, so best of luck to you. And I hope it gets smoother. Yeah. So yeah, hang in there. You can do it. We have faith in you. <laughs> Although I don't just want to throw in the towel on this. Orders are orders. This isn't like the movies. I don't get to say, fuck off, throw my ga gun and badge at him, become some vigilante, save the day and get my job back. I'd rather get my ass thrown in jail than do any of that. But it's also not in my nature to sit still and do nothing. It would drive me crazy if I just idle about. Besides, as someone who has to know about this whole Luke Wright thing... Yeah, I need to go talk to Professor Clark. And there's something else I need to look into. The other matter she mentioned last night, specifically. Same stuff Zachary has also been trying to tell me. Things even the news have been blasting out to the general populace lately. Evening, afternoon, morning, all deaths with the same modus, modus, blamed on a single serial killer. Or is it still the case? Found dead in the early hours of the morning today. The fire was contained within the room and no other tenants were harmed, according to Lost One Police. We're grasping at straws as far as these murders are concerned. In the first place, I'm not even the one heading this investigation, yet look at me treating it as if it's another high-profile case on my shoulder. How sad is that? Although all three of my friends have mentioned seeing something strange, I don't want to go into that line of thinking for now. Not yet. Not until I've exhausted every logical argument I could throw at it. To be honest, though, I don't know how to take all of this anymore. But I've already given Isabella my word. It'd bother me more if I didn't follow up on a promise I'd made to her. And after Rebecca's claims last night, 
There won't be enough sarcasm in the world if that if what my friends have been telling me is true. I can already hear Isabella's laughter, in fact. Figures. What else can it be? It's not another case. It's something else. That issue Isabella mentioned yesterday morning. I'm sure you remember. You were there. Well, at least you're not neglecting all your friends. Becca, I promised her I'll... She doesn't wait for me to finish. With the roll of her eyes, she turns around and shuts the door in my face. I have no idea what I've said this time, but... I probably deserve that. Yeah, you do, Ash. You're, you're so fucking blind. We'll just have to fix some, this some other time. By then, her temper's sure to have cooled off significantly. Hopefully. For now, I can't laze about. Gotta to attend to things that matter more. Professor Clark first. Deliver the bad news. Then that issue with BRC and Isabella. Maybe I'll also drop by Zach's. Check on him. Hear what he has to say. He's also read that damn letter. He's also been saying odd things about a bunch of photographs. Might as well, while I'm here. Playing a paranormal detective? Or was it supernatural? Can't remember. However, uh, whatever. It wouldn't hurt anyone if I tried to get to the bottom of this. If nothing comes out of this, good. Everyone can shut up about stupid curses and we can finally get back on track with our lives. On to more important stuff. But there is something. Are you two done? There's a moment of confusion when I don't see her familiar ponytail about, only to find her standing behind the door to her apartment seconds later. Hang on, just a moment, everyone. And there we go. Apologies about that. Isabella holds it open, though only slightly, as if to hide from anyone who might happen to pass by. This early and on a lazy weekend? I doubt anyone would. But from the gap in what little light there is behind her, I can make out the appearance of someone who has clearly just gotten off from bed. Hair in complete disarray, eyes still heavy with sleep, and a small pout on her lips. She hasn't even got out of her <coughs> pajamas. I look away long before my senses, sense of decorum kicks in. We might be friends, I'll even dare say we've grown closer over the years, but that doesn't extend beyond the bounds of propriety. I Stephen Rebecca never greets early visit visitors in her sleep clothes. Then maybe it's our fault why she's up this early. <coughs> Still, heat makes a slow crawl up my neck. One that I quickly downplay with a solid cough. I I Isabella, you're up early. Sleepyhead. Lame. No, I'm not. I'm usually up at this hour. You're the one that usually sucks at getting up early. Says the person who looks like she's just fallen out of bed. Instead of the usual quip, she simply averts her gaze to some point beside her. And although it only flashes briefly across her face, an expression of hurt flickers in her eyes it appears the second she turns her attention back to me but that moment has sent a worried tinge twinge in my stomach I've seen it on her plenty of times before just never in a matter that unsettles manner in that, that unsettles it feels I don't know off this time I didn't say anything wrong did I Hey, are you... Uh, anyway, was that Becca with you? You both sound like Mama and Papa when they fight. You're awfully loud. If we get another memo from the landlady, I'm asking the guard to ban you from ever entering this place. Me? Becca's the one almost shouting. Yeah, well, she lives here. You don't. You have no excuse. You're the suspicious-looking person. Thanks. Glad at least one person appreciates how I pretty up this place. Don't flatter yourself. This place would be so much better without having to see your face every few days. Oh, it's love. 
She follows it up with another pout. But her ruffled appearance, particularly how puffy her eyes are, I noticed just now, takes away from the intimidating effects she's trying to show. Really, right now, she just looks more like an angry puppy. Might have laughed at it had, had it not given me another nagging sense that something is definitely wrong with her. What? Has she been crying earlier? That... That is worrying. She rarely does that. The only time it happened? The one time I've ever seen her genuinely tear up over something? I think it was after Devlin caught. The night on, at the bridge. I want to ask. She seems determined to keep it to herself, though. Belle, did something... About yesterday, Ash. The things we talked about. Do you think... Do you think we can take a look at it today? We? I never said you're coming with me. Don't worry. I didn't forget about it. You'll be the first to know if I find anything. No, I, I want to go with you. I'll be ready in a few. This won't take long. Isabella, you really don't have to. I can handle it on my own. You'll just... I won't get in the way, I promise. Besides, maybe... Maybe I can help. You know, if you... If there are... <laughs> files you want to check? I don't like what she's implying. It's true LPD's having a hard time with this, but taking Isabella with me? It's out of the question. Under normal circumstances. You're the one who's going to get in trouble if you do that. You said it yourself. You need information. And I can help you get that. And... And it's not like it matters anymore. I just... I just don't want to stand around doing nothing today. There it is again. A slight shift in her eyes. The mild crease forming between her eyebrows. And the mild slump in her shoulders when she, while she crosses her arms tightly around herself. Like she's shielding herself from whatever painful thing here there is out there. I have plenty of reasons why I shouldn't let her tag along. First and foremost, she's a civilian. Second, I have no concrete plan of action, yet, for going into this blind. No matter how I look at it, it's simply better for her to just wait so she won't be dragged into what might be another one of my failures. Her assumptions might be dead end for all we know. But seeing that expression on her, hearing her speak those words out loud, her desperate, almost pleading tone, I can't bring myself to say no. So I give in, because right there, I see myself in her. The person who doesn't want to stay idle. The person who doesn't want to think of the problems haunting them. Alright, five minutes. What? You're timing me? Well, I can't wait forever. I'm a very busy guy. Four minutes and 45 seconds, Isabella. I hate you so much. I'm taking back what I said last week. You haven't changed at all. Four minutes and 30 seconds, 29, 28. <sighs> I'd hurry if I were you. Ugh, you're awful. I hope you never get a girlfriend. <laughs> she slams the door right after, although my chuckles, the mirth and the lightness in it, linger. With her, there's a voice come easy somehow, even as it, the, its echoes fade and only the ghost of her smile remains. It's not like I'm looking for anyone else. Oh, Ash, just fucking tell her. Come on! I- Stay! God damn it. I want to tell her. It's not because I can't. I won't. I'm the one who has chosen not to. Till I fixed myself. Till I found myself underneath all that guilt and those lies I've been telling all these years. Because no matter how heavy the weight of these feelings are, I'm not yet worthy of them. Of her. Until then, Little words and gestures are the only things I can offer. Minor stuff, such as digging deeper into this thing it be, would be RC in order to ease her worries. I'm not even sure if this will give us anything. I like with the firm case, which I already have proper leads on, I'm just going by her word on this. Speaking of the Luxpin firm case, I still have to inform the professor. The apprehension's there for sure. Made a lot of promises to the man. I would have preferred to tell him in person, not over the phone. But it's better for him to hear it from me rather than from a stranger. The railings offer a steady support while I wait for him to answer. I'd like to think I can do this without losing my nerve. 
My grip on the bar surely tightens it, though, once the call connects. Ashton. Not running today, Professor? He's usually at the park on late Saturday mornings, as long as it isn't raining cats and dogs. Keeps him young and healthy, he says, and he's certainly fit for a man of his age with a sedentary job. Oh, no, not today. He's definitely at the usual place, though. Cheers and laughter, likely from children and families, filter through the receiver. I tend to avoid the park precisely because of this. No use reminding myself of the could-haves when it's already over. Mom's doing well with her career. Dad's also fine the last time I visited. Although neither remarried, they're both content with their lives as it is. Probably the only one still caught up with it, hence my aversion. But all in all, it's still a pleasant sight to see. You're the kind who takes joy in such sights like Professor Clark does. Just thought I'd enjoy the nice weather before it takes a turn for the norm again. And to what do I owe the pleasure? Guy certainly seems happy right now. In any case, I almost don't want to break the news to him. But it's better to get this off quick as long as he doesn't shoot the messenger. He's not the type. However, long-held resentment can change a person, even someone as mild-mannered as the professor. I was hoping to talk to you about the, you know, the case. I suppose I'm just a downer today. As soon as I say those words, he pauses and the lightness in his voice is gone in an instant. Every time we've talked about this in the past, he does that. He's probably trying to gauge the situation based on the tone of my voice. Perhaps it's a good thing I'm delivering this news through the phone. Who knows what he'll see in my face and my mannerisms. The art of keen observation, I learned from the man. Probably already has an idea of what this might be about, from my manner of speaking alone. You aren't in trouble, are you? For a second I hesitate looking at the dirt beneath my shoes. But I manage, eventually. After a long, ragged draw of breath, I pick up where I left off, though still fumbling with my words. Well, I'm in a bit of trouble, if you can call it that. Ashton. He only assumes that tone when there's a reprimand at its heels. But, but I'm not in danger or anything. You said that same excuse a million times before, Detective Inspector. That exhausted rasp in your voice tells a different story. It's nothing like what you're thinking. Don't worry. I was just... <sighs> I was taken off the Luxborn firm case. I expect anger, frustration, maybe even disappointment. But all he gives with me is a small sigh of relief. Is that so? Well, at least you aren't in danger. Liz wouldn't be too happy if she heard you right now. Liz. Aunt Liz, she insisted I call her. His late wife sweet-tempered woman by so many standards. They were never blessed with kids and contented herself with simply managing their bakery. But she's the closest I had to a mom in the few years I had known her. The professor, too. In the absence of my own pa parents in my life, the two feel the ache their divorce left in me. Believe me, you'd get an earful. You don't want to show up on her doorstep looking like you haven't slept a wink either. How many years has it been since? Nine? I can still remember it vividly. Two men, primly dressed, briefcases in hand, and a stern look on each of their faces. They were already frequent visitors to the bakery for a few months, something about the lot being a prime property in downtown Luxburn. I think they were hoping to settle a deal with them, but neither of the couple gave in to their demands. Why should they? That quaint little shop was a dream for them. Aunt Liz sent me home early that night after a fruitless day with the professor. The next morning, news of a bakery raised to the ground had spread across the whole city. One casualty. A few weeks later, the property, property was sought to right enterprise. A fucking hotel now stands in its place. Of course, an investigation was launched after the incident. The name Luke Wright was briefly at the centre of it. With the lack of any evidence, the case ultimately went cold. The professor hides it well, however... I can tell that he hates that man to, his, to this day. He might even blame, blame Luke Wright for every tragedy that happens in the city. He's never blamed me, though, when I'm as equally responsible. I knew something's off the moment those men stepped inside the shop. I could have saved her that night. I could have prevented anything from happening to her. Called for help or whatever. I didn't. 
So it continues to eat me at me until today. The guilt. The Luxman firm case would have been our chance at reopening that old case. If we could prove Luke right of his crimes. Instead, we're back to square one. Yet, all he has for me are words of comfort. To think he can still be this concerned about me, after my carelessness, after I've broken another promise a second time. People never cease to amaze me. You might think that you have failed as an officer. Or maybe you think that you have failed me. And you know more than anyone. I would love to see that man taken down. If anyone deserves to be tried in high court, it's him. But I'm glad nothing's happened to you while you were working on this. That's what's most important. I hate to get news like that again. Suddenly, he stops. I imagine a thoughtful look flashing in his eyes, as he thumbs the wedding band on his ring finger before he continues. Another habit. He's never removed it since that day, has never thought once to remarry, even when he managed to continue on with his life and return to some semblance of normalcy. It's his way, of honouring her, I suppose, but he couldn't bring justice to the man responsible for his loss. Some people, some people are just hard to forget. Silence falls between us afterwards. Don't quite know what to say after that, really. Should I apologize? Show some sympathy? Going into this, I should have thought of something other than just breaking the news to him. As it is, it seems the only thing we can do is feel sorry for each other's misfortunes. I apologize too, for putting you up to this. In another occasion, under different circumstances, I might have accepted that. But... Please. Maybe if things around me hadn't started going beyond my control, the letter, the mansion, the supposed curse behind those, I'd still be quick to blame it all on the bastard too. But as much as I want to keep holding him responsible for it, to add another to his list of sins, it might not be the case. Is Ashton becoming a little bit less of a skeptic? Agreeing will only cut a deeper wound on the professor. I don't want him to keep clinging to this resentment for much longer. He has already gone through so many years of it. This kind of anger is the sort that blinds people. Despite his reassurances, the bitterness still seeps into every syllable he utters. It's one thing for me to act like this. It's painful to watch someone I've considered a second father to go down this path. Please don't apologize. It's really all right. I can try to get it back on Monday when I meet with the chief. No promises, but if not, if not, I'll make sure to keep an ear out for any news. Chief said he's passing it on to a senior officer. I should be able to catch a few tidbits every once in a while. But I swear I won't just give up on this. I'll do everything in my power to get Aunt Liz's case reopened for you. Promises. Again. A bad habit at this point. I wish I could do more for him. All this time I've prided myself over being the one to always know. But suddenly, aside from riot and the murders plaguing the city, I have ghosts and curses to worry about. Things that are completely out of my depth. Professor Clark's right in some way. Things would be so much easier if I just blamed Luke Wright for all of this. At least finding evidence would be a breeze and I'd be all too happy to put him in a place he belongs. Although, if he was, in any way, also complicit to what's happening, legalities may have my hands tied. But, maybe that's my fault. I might have missed the ticket and closing the case once and for all last night. If only I had done a better job during the party. But then, the commotion. There was Hannah Wright and Rebecca distracting me from my purpose too. I'd include that gate crasher as well, even though it's only for a moment. So many things have gone wrong last night that... Listen to me first! I saw something in the house earlier. It 
stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Last night, at the party. But it's real! What do you think I saw? It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? That woman. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. Shit. That was what Isabella had been warning us about. It was the same thing Rebecca talked about last night. What Zach told me about a few days prior. How many of these instances have I dismissed since reading the letter? How many have I ignored and passed off with some effect of fatigue or lack of sleep? Even last night, I hosted and lacing the foods is the first thing I'd considered, purely because that's what my training dictates. It's a mindset I've grown used to. As a setting, the gears in my head automatically takes in situations like that. Of course, I'm not discounting all of that yet until I have enough information, something to form a conclusion from. Proof, or whatever for and whatever for it may come. Oh, cute little totally not the ring girl. <laughs> and fun's over, Garrett's here. Boo. <laughs> Welcome back, great to see you, Garrett. But thinking straight is impossible when, all of a sudden, all your beliefs are being upturned in the most violent way possible with that. Jesus, I need a sounding board. I need to talk to someone and... And Zach's the best person for that. I... I have to go, Professor. Oh, no problem. But what are you? I don't have time to stop and listen to what the Professor has to say, as I cut the call short. In the same second, Isabella emerges from her apartment, fully dressed and ready for the day. As usual, she greets me with a smile but it falls just as fast once she catches a glimpse of my face. Shane would have been the first comforting thing I see today. It annoys me that I'm partially responsible for the worried one, one replacing it. I must look too close to a picture of someone choking or dying because there's nothing but concern in the first words she speaks. Ash, are you... Do you need to go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, no. No, I don't. I don't, okay. But we should hurry. Come on, don't forget to lock your door. Seriously, you look like you're about to fall over. Are you alright? Because if you're planning to faint right here, I won't be able to carry you. Yes, don't mind me. I, I just remembered some... stuff from last night. I need to talk to Z-Man about this. Mind if we drop by his place first? Shouldn't we call him? To let him know? It's still pretty early, but we'd probably arrive there around noon. Oh, so what do you mean about this? Is Zach? He was also there when I opened the letter, right? He read it too. I'm sure he's fine, but it wouldn't hurt to check on him. Oh, to make no. sure. See if, if he'll say the same things you told me yesterday. He's also been seeing things. It's also the same woman I saw last night. I'm not saying there's really a curse yet, but we, we have to look at this from every possible angle. And don't worry, he won't mind. He's probably just watching TV right now. Let's go. Okay, but speak up if you're not feeling well. You really look like you're choking on something. You didn't have to do this for me in the first place. You know it's not as simple as that. We head down to my car in record time. Not a single second wasted to hit the road and drive to Zach's place. If any one of us, other than Isabella, who knows what, who knows anything about what's going on? Who can help sort this un this muddled mess my mind is? Blech. It's got to be him. He listened to her. Zach's the kind who prefers to laze around in his apartment on a weekend, especially after having a busy week like the last one. The big guy's nowhere in sight, though, when I arrive in his unit. Figures. People don't seem to be where they should be when I need them. Looking around, I find no sign where he might have gone to. He usually leaves a note on his fridge if he's out for the day, just in case someone drops by. As there isn't one, he probably just went out for a quick walk. I hope. 
Maybe he ran out of eggs or something and went to buy some. He is out of eggs, after all. Puts my mind running to rest, running mine to a rest for a while. He always has to have some, be it for an omelette or something he's baking. Ash, should you be rummaging around? It's bad enough we went in here without asking for his permission. Chill, I'm just looking. Actually, could also go for a fucking pie right now. Zach's fridge is next to empty, save for a few leftovers. All I can do is sigh as I close it behind me. If you see me take anything, feel free to call the police. <laughs> Isabella's quick to shoot me a sharp glance and another chuckle slips from me, despite the unease in my stomach. But the cheer only lasts for me a few seconds, mostly because she hasn't been in the mood for any sort of friendly banter. It's a silence that's telling, and a quiet Isabella? It's usually the first recipe for an incoming shitstorm. You always do this whenever you visit another person's house. I have a lot of questions about your methods. Just with Zack. Still worried for our friend, of course. Despite what's bothering Isabella, she's anxious too. She's been standing by the doorway for a few good minutes now. Since we entered Zack's place, in fact. Doesn't seem to know what to do with herself. But as much as I want to put her at ease, her nervous ticks are starting to get to me. The manner in which she makes herself smaller, the way she fidgets with her hands clasping them one moment and unfurling them the next. It's distracting enough that I want to ask what's wrong. I doubt she'll give me a straight answer, though, and the best I can do is to help her temper it. You don't have to hang around the door. You might be here for a while. You can sit down. She hesitates for a second, but eventually takes the empty seat by Zack's study table. Aren't we going to look for him? Sure, we can, but where are we going to start? I can think of a few places he might be, but Luxburn's a big city. I don't want to miss the big guy if we leave, and... I trail off, making a vague gesture in the general direction of Zack's bed. The messy bed suggests he was out in a hurry, but he didn't, he didn't even bother to fold the sheets. His cell phone's been left behind as well. Another odd thing which he has made a habit to never leave it in case a car... Ah, blah. Another odd thing that which he has made a habit to never leave it behind in case a client calls. And this locked door points to the fact that it wasn't a forced exit. That seems to reassure her, but not so much. Understandable. Anything might happen. In hindsight, I should have left Rebecca alone, either. We'll have to check on her later. In the meantime, Zack, who had no other clue where he is and no other way to contact him, we have no choice but to wait. Sure, I could give the room another thorough run-through, but I don't think Zack would appreciate me upending his place. Isabella won't let me do that, either. Besides, I haven't eaten anything yet. Isabella probably hasn't too. We did leave in a hurry. Might as well take this chance to cool down a bit, right? Anything to distract myself so that I won't don't just charge ahead charge head first because of whatever paranoid scheme that's come to mind. Isabella is with me. I can't be reckless. Returning to the kitchen, the first thing I see is a bag of chips when I rifle through his cupboards. After muttering a permission and apology its owner won't hear, I grab it. Asshole! Keep eating other people's groceries. Isabella doesn't miss shooting me another glare, but she doesn't really make an effort to stop me this time. She ignores my offer of food, though. So instead, I set myself on Zack's old couch and turn on the television. Isabella's silence may not be too heavy, but sure as hell is awkward. The screen lights up right as some awful noontime drama starts airing on Channel 9. Nothing like sitting in front of the TV, with a mindless drone running in the background to waste away the time. And wasted away we do. The afternoon has hit its last few hours when movement comes from the other side of the door, and Zack's heavy treads break the monotonous drivel from the TV. The lock clicks, the knob turns, and slowly it swings open to reveal. And he's very exhausted looking Zack. So this was just after he had his encounter with the ghost with the camera in his room and then he ran out into the night. So this is before he gets caught and sent to prison. So just so we've got the timeline in place. What? Did he run a marathon? Subsy man. Hey Zach. Sorry we just barged in here. Ash was Relax. Z Man gave me a copy of the key himself. Light as my tone may be, his arrival eases the restless edge in me. Who knows what I would have done if something bad happened to one of my friends. 
another minute had gone by without him showing up, I might have resorted to unconventional methods. Only after you broke the 13th one. I can't keep replacing them every time you think it'd be a good idea to break into my apartment. And stop calling me Z-Man! I didn't break anything this time. Ash, just because I gave you a key doesn't mean you can just stroll in here whenever you want to. And hey, is that my... It's scary how the friendly banter and easy smile come naturally. I do it, even without thinking. That speaks volumes about how comfortable I am around him. That's nice, isn't it? It makes me afraid of it, however. It's the idea that a time might come where I might just have might just do these things without meaning to and offend him in some way. The friendship we have might be closer than most I've shared with others. But there are about excuse me, there are boundaries you can't cross with the uh, without the other's permission. Zach's been respectful of that so far, neither asking about my parents or what happened to them. Me? I bet he'd say, not so much. It's also this easy banter that makes me wish we could just stay like this. No worries, no problems. Just potato chips and the debate on whether or not I deserve them. But as usual, something always cuts moments like this short. Of course he eats all of it. You know, I was saving that for the weekend. Did you at least share some with Bella? Don't worry about it. I'm good, Zack. Really? <laughs> it's free food, you know? What was that you usually say? You don't say no to free food? <laughs> what happened? No, I'm just not hungry. Although her tone forces her to do a, him to do a double take, Zack doesn't push it. The question's all too clear in his eyes when he glances my way, though. I really wish I could answer him. Despite my best efforts, Isabella has been an unforthcoming as well. What am I supposed to do? I can't just force her to speak, can I? She's not a criminal to be interrogated. She's a friend for Pete's sake. It's a good thing Zack has a better handle of the situation than I, and soon enough he changes the subject. Where it leads to isn't exactly the better topic, however. Aye? Aye, 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 aye. But if you want something, just say so. I've got a fully restocked pantry right here at your disposal. Still not a five-star level thing, but for an empty stomach, it'd do. Just say the word. Thanks, Zack. Maybe next time. Food is not really what we came here for. I... we... Ash... he's the one who... She stumbles into one of her uncertain silences again before glancing my way. There's a plea in the, there for me to take the lead in this, but where do we start? The mansion? The strange things we've been seeing? The letter? Am I afraid of what he might say? I can't even believe I'm considering taking a deeper look into this whole thing in the first place, but here I am. No, you're right. There really are some odd things going on here lately. How is everything with you lately, Zack? Oh, hold on, Ash. Both of you. Did I just hear you say that? Is this why Isabella's here? Has something happened? Calm down. We're just here to check on things. So, did you meet Andrew about the photos? What photographs? Unlike when he brought up the subject of photos with me, he doesn't hesitate when Isabella asks for it. Zack hastily fishes them out of a nearby drawer and hands it to her. I can almost see it in him, the one second hindsight kicks in, the realisation that she would have been a better listener than I. Makes sense, when all I've been doing this morning is calling it a Halloween prank. She goes through each of the prints in silence, her shoulders growing stiffer by the second until she's gone rigid and pale. But it's the telling glances they exchange afterwards that speaks volumes of the things running inside their minds. What did Andrew say about them? It could be one, but there's no guarantee it's a supernatural thing. It doesn't always happen, so that's a dead end right there. Now that I think about it, bothering that guy for this feels pretty silly now. But with the dreams lately... That's all? Did he say anything about the damn letter at all? Did you ask him even? As expected, Zack starts to look at me like I've grown a second head. Yeah, I would too, if there were ever a universe where I was standing in front of myself. Because even as a child, I never believed in ghost stories. The lucky charms and mystical objects from my mother have often been stored away or given as paltry gifts to those who would appreciate them more. Yeah, that's really everything. The letter kind of slipped my mind. The photos were more important at that time. There was some stuff about the local horror stories, though. Uh, talked about the curses 
and he was really fascinated with the story about a wraith asking for a sacrifice to move on. Kinda nasty if you ask me, but it does make sense if you simply go along with it. I'm not sure how this will help in the grand scheme of things. Why are you asking about this anyway? Rose's death isn't just a coincidence, Zack. It may have something to do with... I may have... Wait, wait, wait. S stop right there for a sec, Bella. I thought you ain't buying this stuff, Ash. Just the other day, you said the exact same thing. Granted, I haven't eliminated every single possibility here yet. What else is there to go off from here? From here? The worried look Zack shoots my way doesn't help one bit in helping me gather my thoughts either. That's when, when that's what I came here for. Somehow, everyone's, everyone's just so worried about me. It's not like I'm pulling this out of my ass. I still don't, but even Rebecca, out of all people, claims there's something. Whatever this is, someone has got to look into it. Everything about this screams shady. And along with Isabella's warnings, What's occurring around Zack? What's happening around Luxburn since Isabella found the letter? Have you two seen the news this morning? Zack's puzzled expression is enough answer. Of course he hasn't. Another night. Another nightmare. The guy most likely went out as soon as he got out of bed to shake the images off. The memories have never really left him. Isabella, though... I haven't, actually. Mama... Mama called, and... I was busy. That could easily mean anything. Did her Clea, her older brother, end up in jail again? She's had to bail him out numerous times in the past, but all that did was piss her off, not sap her every really ounce of cheer out of her. Or is it the other brother, the younger one who keeps insisting that he'll quit school so she could come home? That was two years ago, as far as I know. She had already sorted that one out. Couldn't have been the her father, right? With the mansion sale, she's earned enough to cover every bill for a while. It should. So what is it then? No problem. It should be in the afternoon news as well. Whatever's bugging her, I doubt it's something meant for casual discussion, else she would have mentioned it sooner. Tucking my curiosity for later, I take the remote and begin cycling through the channels. A distraction. Not a good one, I admit, but it's definitely better than leaving her to brood. Eventually, I find one doing a recap of this morning's reports. And there it is. The poor guy's unidentifi unidentifiable with how badly his body's been burnt. Murder via arson? That'd be the logical explanation if, the if I was the officer looking into it. Except, they couldn't find the source of the fire. The fire didn't even spread. Found dead in the early hours of the morning today. The fire was contained within the room, and no other tenants were harmed, according to Luxborn police. They're going to consider spontaneous human combustion soon enough. They don't find anything else. But what's important for everyone to note is the state of the room. A similar writing was found in another victim's room from last week's incident. Both were employees of Briar Realty Corporation. LBN has reached out to the... Like what happened to Cooper. Hell, I wonder how many other deaths like this I've missed while I've been looking into Wright. The LPD's already thinking it's a serial killer at this point. How long until they consult with the London Metropolitan, I'm not sure. The Aslan Butcher has always been an enigma, even to the people of this city. Gone for a few years, then in the next, one body after another is found. Merely handling the case has apparently driven the Chief Inspector insane years ago. He never did find out who committed those murders. Maybe now, this time. This is because of that thing, isn't it? I did this somehow. Her words all come out like a whisper, but each syllable lingers in the air, heavy with her guilt. In the thick tension of the room, they strike harsher than any of the things that we've said. However, she also has to understand, no, that she isn't the only one on this. No one has asked her to take this upon herself. Rebecca won't. Zack won't. I sure as hell won't. It ain't too late. We, we could still fix this. There's three of us here. Four if you count Rebecca. No. She's... She's staying away from this. I don't want to involve her in this any more than I already have. 
both of you as well. I already said it. That's completely out of the question. Stop asking. Encouragements aside, this is ho still a whole fucking mess and we're in it blind. The only way to make it worse is if we start running around like a bunch of headless chickens. But I have to... Uh, but I have a concrete plan now. I think. Maybe Isabel is right. Maybe we should dig deeper into BRC itself. Maybe we are looking at it the wrong way. However, my suspicions are mine for the moment. Details are something Zach doesn't need to know about until I have something to show. It's enough that he's aware that I have an, I, an idea in mind. Sorry. For his part, Seaman doesn't push it. And nothing but a heavy silence leads our departure hours later. Seriously, Zach would probably make a more responsible officer than me if he only had the heart to join the force. It would certainly use, we could certainly use more kind people like him. But as good as that thought is, I pushed it all into the back of my mind as Isabella and I head for my car. Tonight, I can't stay distracted. Except for a few half-hearted attempts to get some kind of reaction from Isabella, the drive to BRC is quiet, awkward affair. More so, the hour-long wait for nightfall. Even with only the two of us, the place is rife with tense energy. Only a matter of minutes now. But the ticking seconds don't take away the edge. For the fifth time, I reach out and fiddle with the radio, adjusting and turning the knobs with no real purpose. It's a nervous quirk I've developed and never bothered to correct during stakeouts, something to keep my mind occupied during long nights. What else is there for me to do? Oh, sorry. The person I usually count on for a casual, out of the blue chat refuses my attempts at starting one. Ash, out with it! Where she quickly falters into silence after, in spite of the tone she takes though, it makes me doubt if she really means everything she's telling me right now. She hasn't even glanced my way since we arrived. Having second thoughts? You can still back out if you want. We're just going to my office. Why should I? To know? You can get in trouble, maybe. This isn't exactly legal. Scope BRC out. See if the real estate company has any more information that may be of help. Find things about Cooper and the other agents assigned to the Elmgard mansion. According to Isabella, the last property the victims have worked on. Sure, I could also check the station for full reports. That's the easy, semi-legal way. But I don't want to bump into Chief right now. The guy, the precinct, guys of the precinct will definitely throw me out on his orders as soon as they see me. Not that my plan right now is any better. I'm just breaking into a different place, more or less, with a civilian to boot. The latter still doesn't sit well with me. I never will, especially if this might put her in a very tricky position afterwards. She's been very careful when it comes to her work. Almost a model employee, as people would say. Why is she throwing caution to the wind now? I'm not an employee here. I'm not supposed to be looking for any confidential stuff. Only people like you are privy to. If you mentioned earlier that this is your plan, I might have had enough time to think about it. I already promised to help if you need access to those files. I didn't think you'd want to see them this soon and in this way. Besides, the same goes for you, right? You were taken off your case. Won't you get in trouble with your boss? Honestly, it's a toss-up between breaking into her office or into the Wright's mansion. Yeah, good choice, breaking into the office. As it stands, I'll have an easier time getting in here first. After all, why would someone want to break into a realty company? Been here many times before already, for a few casual visits when I wanted to bug Scaredy Cat. Over the years, I've more or less grown familiar with their security setup and how badly staffed they are. Plus, it's an old building. The bankruptcy, bankruptcy rumors are true, it just means their access pr protocols might also be outdated. Still, I can do this on my own, you know. Really? And how are you even planning to get into our office without an access card? Please explain. Well, I was going to pry open the card reader and use a gecko. You're a hopeless case. I really want to know why no one has locked you up yet. Yeah, you're helping me with this. Willingly. I don't think that'll sit well with the Philippine Embassy either. Chances are you'll probably get deported the minute they find out. Low blow, I know, but it's worth a shot when she can still turn back. It's not like I don't have any means to get into the place. With or without her, I have a way. At least I have a reason to be snooping about. My badge and rank can speak for me in case things go south. You? For a passing second, it seems to work. 
hint of panic and hesitation flashes across her features when she looks at me with searching eyes. Then, unexpectedly, it dissolves, not because of the fear I'm anticipating, but underneath something sharp and searing. Not sure what she sees exactly, what she's hoping to find in the short while she holds my gaze. All of it merely goes unspoken and no longer than a minute later, she simply averts her attention back to the window, training it once again at some point outside. Isabella, please, now is not the time. It's too late for that, Ash. Give it a rest. An appeal, broken in a voice too harsh coming from her, perhaps unintentional, perhaps one that's already too exhausted of everything going on lately. It's hard not to concede when she takes on that tone, and soon, despite myself, I sigh. Tucking away every concern I've been lugging around, in favour of trusting her on this, according her, according her the same confidence she has implicitly given me all this time. Alright, okay, if that's what you want. And don't worry, I didn't mean what I said earlier. I... I won't let anything happen to you. Aww, sweet. Her lips briefly, briefly turn up in a smile, though none of the cheer reaches her eyes. Just get this over with, okay? Everyone should be out of the office by now. Somehow, the uncertainty in her posture makes me wonder if she intended it as some kind of comforting gesture. Whether it's for me or her, she doesn't let me find out. Without saying another word, she exits the car, while I'm left scrambling and chasing after her. She's already at the side entrance, her hand raised on the car reader beside it and another poised to push the door open when I catch up to her. Whatever doubt there has been on her face a while ago, it's gone. Seeing her like this makes it easier to believe my worries are unfounded, and things might go smoothly this time. And where do you think you kids are going? It's late. Most, uh, most offices in this building have already closed up shop for the weekend. The bloke seems friendly enough, though one can't really tell from his voice alone. He might be the wary sort, for all I know. Keeping an unconcerned face and aloof air won't hurt, until I figured out how to wiggle us out of this situation. But from the way Isabella's face brightens up, it looks as though getting through won't be too much of a problem. He probably, he's probably been working here for a few months already then, probably about four to six months max. Otherwise, he would have recognised Isabella or me at first glance. I haven't shown my face here since I've been assigned to the firm case a year ago. In the first place, none of their security officers ever lasted a year in service. The longest was around seven and a half. I'll give this guy around that. I'll give this guy around that before he gets fired and finds a better paying job. For the moment, this too friendly attitude is almost a gift. Hey, Sam! Oh, look who we have here. Been a few days since I last saw that ponytail in here. Uh, Santiago? <laughs> Close enough. Wait, wait, don't tell me yet. I'll, I'll get it right this time. Sanchez. You were closer the first time. <laughs> I take it back, this geezer's not going to last past this month. He can't even remember a regular, regular employee's name. Alright, I'm sure of it this time. Centillon? Still a ways off, Seb. Isabella, we don't have all night. I know, I know, just let me handle this. <laughs> Sorry, Seb. Some other time. We're in a bit of a hurry. I just need to get a few things from my cubicle. Important work stuff, you know? Is it okay if we drop upstairs for a sec? Oh, absolutely. No, go right ahead. As long as you have your access card with you, we're good. Not sure if I'm allowed to let your boyfriend in, though. Who? Me? My what? Aww. Uh, your boyfriend. The, the guy with you, isn't he? Yes. Secret boyfriend. It's a fair observation if I'd say so myself. Needless to say, the silence that descends is both uncomfortable and terribly awkward. Though the latter is probably coming mostly from me, because the next second Isabella laughs. <laughs>, laughs. Lighter than the ones I've heard from her lately. A comforting sound, really, after seeing in such a dour mood since this morning. Even as it all subsides into mere chuckles sooner than I'd like. It's comforting to see that I'm at least partially responsible for it. Despite my poor heart being beaten to a sorry pulp. Oh, uh, let me play you a song on the tiniest violin. Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's definitely not my boyfriend. She might as well have set all fire register to dust while she's at it. Frankly, the number of no's in that sentence alone is a bit too much. Or not enough, I continue to play the tiniest violin concerto for you. 
Christ, one would have been enough to get the message across. Did you really have to put it that way? That's impossible! Stop being funny, Seb. I'll go on ahead, okay? Well. She quickly shuffles inside with nothing more than a small wave, leaving behind an even more awkward atmosphere for me to wade through. Sorry, just a second. Mm. Sorry. It would have been bearable if I didn't have to suffer through a stranger's amusement. Sorry for my muffled words at times. Something's really, really wrong with the inside of my mouth, so it's a little bit weird. Bleh. Alas, woe is me. Not the boyfriend, but close to it, huh? M mind your own business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me? Well, you know, stuff in the news. Do you mean what happened with Rose Cooper? If I'm going to be stuck with him for another while, I might as well try to gather as much intel as I can. He may just be a guard, someone with no real authority, but most of the time people like him are the ones who know more than they let on. Yeah, but even before that, we've got a couple of good blokes we never saw again. Really? Those guys could have just resigned for all you know. They managed to strike a good deal with the mansion in Ansem, right? That didn't do the trick? <laughs> it didn't seem like it. The bloke shouted like no tomorrow again. Wasn't very pleased when Gurley called and asked for another leave yesterday afternoon. Gurley? Isabella? Not too surprising, considering she's always been, already been gone for three days. Now she's asking for another? Not that it's a bad thing. It's within her rights as an employee, but... Isabella rarely uses her work leaves. Oh, oh no. Wait, what? The rumours, BRC, Rose Cooper, missing in action employees, all of it ceases to matter in that instant. Almost on instinct, my eyes zero in on the intercom speaker, as if staring daggers at it will show me the man behind the voice so I can see the truth in his face myself. Oh, you don't know? No, what? not. He's lucky I'm not here to hurt anyone. If I were someone with ill intentions, he might not be smiling at the end of the day. Well, no, but... I'll go and unlock that side entrance for you then. Just don't forget to turn off the lights before you both leave, okay? Hey, wait a second. What do you mean by... He cuts off the connection before I can finish, and the rest of my question dies in my throat. Soon the latch clicks and the side door swings open. <coughs> the Seb... A stout man wearing a uniform still too loose for him waves me over from the gap before he disappears behind his station again. Just my luck. Here I thought I'm going I'm going to have to count on whatever Isabella brings with her. Although, no matter how much I want to feel happy, something else has already taken a firm seat in the forefront of my mind. Is that why she's been acting not like herself today? Since when? Of course, as I step into the building, I try to push all these questions as far down as I can. I need to focus. Work is work. But if what I've re heard is exactly what I think it is, if it's a sign of things to come, honestly, I don't feel too good about that. It's a quiet ride up to the seventh floor, where the BRC Luxman main office is. Seb has been quite kind enough to switch the guest elevator's power on, as so I'm about to head for the fire exit stairs. Which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy, but the stairs? I don't want to tire out too quickly, in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble with the building this quiet. But you never know. I swear, this whole place definitely feels eerie at this time of night. Some paranormal shenanigans, perhaps? But until I've confirmed everything, this is still just stories. Worst things can happen. No need to scare myself. Staying calm means fewer mistakes. Oh, I sure am fucking gutsy. Especially with what I'm doing. I'm breaking a lot of laws here. I'm also putting Isabella in a lot of risks. Best thing that can come out of this is that, 
Isabella's right all along. Worst case scenario? One, someone finds out Isabella's involvement in this and her boss fires her. Two, I find evidence that would impl implicate BRC or Luke Wright in a crime, and my meddling, if I'm not careful enough, makes it indismissible in court, inadmissible in court. Though I'll be honest, I strongly prefer losing my job or facing Wright over some spirit or ghost or whatever it is. I can always work with, around the problems with the former. Isabella could also find a better job. BRC never did pay her properly, despite her efforts. The fighting off a phantom? How does one even do that? Do guns even work with them? Yeah, not going to happen. But tonight, I'm here to fix things. If I do it without leaving a trail, all the better. Good thing that's what I'm good at. What I'll probably never be good at is finding the proper words when a snitch when a stitch calls for it. Seeing Isabella's small form beyond those doors, how she pushes through despite carrying an entirely different burden this time, how she's pretending as if everything's normal, it's... it's difficult not to try. People who have never really looked beyond her smiles will never know, will never understand. Hell, even Rebecca's probably not yet aware of this. I get it. We have other problems at hand. I've done the same thing plenty of times to protect myself after all. But it's all in her eyes once she glances up at the few light wraps I give the door. She wastes no time in leaving the mess of papers on the table and opening it for me, though her, even her confusion as she takes in my presence barely hides it. Seb, let you in? The rough edge in her voice rings a whole different tune now that I'm aware why. The knowing is different from hearing it straight from her. I can't simply bring this up, can I? It's not a topic suited for casual conversation, and... I doubt she wants to talk to me about it. As much as I want to help, there's a distance between us I'll never be able to cross. One that wouldn't even be shared as if it wasn't for me. Perhaps, if I had been more honest years ago and less of a coward, I might have been able to. Figures I couldn't even do that for the one person I keep telling myself that I care deeply about. What can I say? I'm a very charming person. To a rock, maybe. <laughs> This is the closest we can get to it, I suppose. The light banter, the fleeting glances, sometimes the long bouts of silence. And it's enough. For me it is. Because even without words, there's comfort. With her, it's easy. Must be a pretty cool rock then. Ugh, get over yourself. Hey now, I deserve some slack here. Today's supposed to be my day off, and yet here I am helping you out. Helping? By standing at the door? Well, you're not exactly letting me in. Despite what she says, she moves to block me when I try to enter. She must have expected this the second we walked up from the building's entrance and counted on the night shift guard to bar, her, bar me from the place. It's reassuring to know she's somehow worried about me, though it's a bit misplaced at the moment. Besides, concerns aside, I can't really let her get into the thick of things without me, not with all the problems on her plate right now. Isabella... Seriously, Ash, Seb might get in trouble for this. You might get in even bigger trouble with your boss. And you're not? We've already talked about this back at Zach's. It's out of the question. At least do it for Seb, please. He's a really nice guy. With the way things are going here, he's... Awesome, I can't wait to check it out, Garrett. I do love those videos. They're so sneaky with magic. So sneak. On that, I agree with her. Seb's not such bad a fellow. Might be a little careless with his job and talks too much, but he means well. I'd hate to see the guy leave here with a bad record, in case something goes wrong. However, the anxious look she shoots back at the table brings her... Behind her brings an even bigger worry. Did you find something? Aside from what you told me about yesterday? N not yet. I'm not sure. Fuck me and my patience. I want to see it now! <laughs> but I'll be patient until tomorrow. I haven't started going through the files we have in the records room. Just the ones they handed to me in rows. Let me see. Wait, Ash! Isabella, I already promised you that no one's going to get in trouble after we're done here. Even Seth. I'll make sure we leave the place clean. Her hesitation's still there. A split second of indecision as she tries to form an argument. Eventually, when nothing comes to mind, she steps aside. Okay. 
but we can't take the original files out of this office, clear? Not even a single sheet. We'll just have to make a copy. Don't worry, that's the plan. It appears to reassure her. A nod, then shortly, she gestures for me to follow. Passing the sea of cubicles, I can't help but take in everything in the office. A force of habit, for the most part. As far as I know, BLC Luxman used to own this whole building. Excuse me. <clears throat> Offices in several floors, once upon a time, when real estate is still a lucrative business for a company in this side of the country. Then, competition showed up and suddenly, everything's not so good anymore. It only got worse as the years went by, or so according to the rumours. Now the branch is just this floor, despite what the huge sign on the building's facade says. Frankly, it's not too hard to believe when one looks at the state of this room is right now. A number of desks have been cleared out. Personal mementos are scarce as if the employees have gone on an exodus. That'll be downsizing. Probably. Still worrisome, though. Of course, I shake all away all this when Isabella starts handing me the papers she's been looking through. Focus, Frey. There's no point in whining or dwelling on it any longer. That's why we're here in the first place. To find out what the real deal is the old-fashioned way. Isabella's presence is a whole other blessing, too. Couldn't imagine how long this would take if I pushed going in here alone. Is this everything? Where are the documents you mentioned? Still locked up in the records room. Do you need them now? Bring them here. Everything that has to do with the mansion's sale. Even those who worked on it during the renovations. The cleanup. Everything. Including your mandatory sign-in sheets. <laughs> it's an odd thing to bring up, but at least elicits a laugh from her before she heads to the records room. She remembers. No matter how weak the sound of it is from her usual ones, it's a welcome thing to hear. It reminds me that Isabella I know is still in there. She returns minutes later with a thick stack of folders and binders. For the next half of the hour, we work in complete silence while we dig into everything compiled in the folders. Not an easy task considering how thick the whole thing is, but there's two of us. In fact, Isabella does most of the work, sorting the contracts, the employee list, and stuff we won't need into a neat pile. Just the files for the restoration alone makes up a stack of papers that's an inch thick. Third-party service providers hiding, hired for the masonry, radiators, woodworking, plasterwork, slate roofing, and a whole bunch of other things are well documented. Hell, every single contractor who worked on the project was listed individually, even if they were just there to do the plumbing. It's a high-profile and high-cost estate, all right. But with that scope comes the loopholes. With plenty of room to hide something in, there's something fishy going on. All I have to do is find a pattern, and it doesn't take long. Upon closer glance, despite the original owners uh, shouldering the renovation costs, it will be surprising if they manage to break even on the Ermengarde mansion. What with the additional expenses of the open, for the open house, commission for the agents, and other overhead fees? At one point, negotiations to get a lister under BLC's name almost broke down too, some disagreement about the listing price. The owners wanted to be rid of it as quickly as possible, while keeping the worth at a profitable level. BRC was insisting on a higher amount, double what the appraiser su suggested. This, plus the rumour that their branch is closing? BRC Luxburn really is in the red. The sale of the mansion could have easily been a desperate move to keep the branch afloat. No wonder the final sale happened as fast as it did. Did you know about this? No. They took it off our hands. After I submitted the final documents for the sale, I didn't even know until I read this. I'm not sure if Rose did. I've only been given the key to the records room after she... A anyway, my point is, they've kept all the files from me. Rose was the one who compiled everything from our side. And even then, she was probably not aware of this. There's only so much they let us know. After that, they just told us to wait for our commission. And that the legal team would handle the rest. The rumors are true. Huh. Seems so. Sheesh, this place is just unlucky. Going bankrupt while the rest of this crap is happening? This isn't what we're looking for. What we need is the who. People aside from Isabella and Cooper are involved in this business with the mansion. And the how they are now. We can't do much from the outside contractors. They won't be on file. The employee list, on the other hand... 
Even with two people working through the pile, the whole task still takes quite a while. It's a quarter of an hour later when we put down the papers with a sigh and move on to the clients upon Isabella's insistence. For that, the sign in form from the open house comes in handy. <laughs> Something that gives me a laugh when I spy the fake name I wrote on the sheets. Why'd I even pick this name? It sounds so lame. What name? Nothing important. Just focus on those papers you have. We need to finish this soon, before Seb suspects anything. She snatches the paper away before the thought of hiding it occurs to me. Not that there's much secret in it. Isabella found me that afternoon anyway, but still. Ash Lee? I've been careless that day, tailing Luke Wright without confirming where they were headed off to. While the butler's terribly efficient in keeping the Wright's engagement from the public eye, there are other ways if only given it any time of day, at the time of my day. In retrospect, I've, I've been too eager, too impatient to find something that'll crack the case and be done with it. Maybe my failure goes as far back as the day of the open house, not during the party last night. Yeah, well, I was pressed for time. Seriously? Ashley? Were you even trying? Oh, come on. You didn't even notice I was the one who wrote it down. Of course I wouldn't. Only an idiot would use his real name. It worked, though. Admit it. It's genius. Who would have thought, huh? She responds with a roll of her eyes and drops the matter entirely by shoving the paper back into my hands. We lapse back to our respective tasks afterwards, wordlessly skimming through everything. Read, set aside, get another one. Looking back at the sign-in sheet, I spot Luke Wright and Hannah Wright listed up top. Not that I didn't know about them already, of course, but scanning through the list, a name immediately comes to my attention. Madeline Williams. Something wrong? Huh? No, uh... Just that I remember this girl listed here. She frowns, moves her seat closer and takes a careful read of the sheet. It's a long moment before she speaks up again. From the way she tenses, she appears to be expecting the worst already. What about her? She was with me, in the group following Cooper, when we toured the upstairs part of the mansion, I mean. Rather loud one, especially when we took a peek into the attic. Kept talking about the ghost stories the whole tour. Then, do you? Do you think she's... She was reported missing three days after. There was a ruckus at the precinct the day her family filed it. Threats were naturally given as a lack of progress days later. Desperate ones. Her family's willing to shell out all the cash they have just to find her. To no avail, unfortunately. Officer Benjamin has been in a bad mood ever since he spoke with them. But what can he do? What can we do? He's tired. We're all tired. There's only so much we're able to do, with everything that's been shoved into our hands recently. She still hasn't been found. It's already been a week. Isabella makes no further comment aside from a nod. Instead, she sits back down on her chair with a distant look in her eyes, and hands, her hands boring to a fist as she struggles with her frustration. Or maybe it's anger. Sorry, there's just a bloody moth on my desk that's annoying me. I usually like moths, but this one is getting my face. Bleh. Or maybe it's anger. But the moment doesn't last too long. Soon her grip loosens and she folds her hands back to on her lap. The expression, however, is one I've seen too many times in the mirror. What does one say to a person burdened not by a loss? One loss, but many. Who carries it on their shoulders like a badge of shame. I've yet to find the answer to that myself. Until then... The only way is forward. Press on to see where our attempts at fixing our mistakes might lead us. And despite my own doubts, a glimpse of that look on her face is enough reason for me. I can't just give up. There's too much at stake. Too much to lose. With a renewed focus, I continue. On the third and last sheet, I spot another one. Beatrice Wilde. One I recall from the newspaper obituaries. I normally like moths, but this one is a massive beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yeah, like, moths are really pretty. I really love them. It's just that, like, carpet moths and moths that eat my clothes, they annoy me. Died of a heart attack. A letter of correspondence is expressing condolences to her family confirms as much in her files. Passed away at the age of 74 in her sleep. She's at that age. It certainly could have been a natural death. Right? 
I like to believe so. Three more letters turn up when I rummage through the stack. It leaves nothing more than the foreboding feeling in me. They're all addressed to families of clients who have passed away in the past week. Regardless, these go into the pile of things worth looking into after our visit here, along with Williams' info sheet. There are just so many names, so many faces. Each one I've seen that day, and here I am wondering if they're all right. It isn't a selfless thought that brings the question to mind. Rather, it's the logic that if more of them are still alive, more people I can choose to question. Nothing's concrete yet, of course. These are just speculations, but we're making progress. Once done with the sign-in sheets, I stash it along with the growing pile to my left and pull out as many of the other documents Isabella has already prepared for me. We're working through the employer list now, those who have been assigned to the mansion. Because if Isabella was to be believed, if what she's seen and what happened to Rose Cooper is because of that letter, I need to know everyone who has possibly read it aside from the three of us. They've been noticing strange things too. For all I know, these may have just been terrible coincidence. Though the thought of that starts to diminish as we dig into BRC's company files. Fifteen minutes later, the stack close to my elbow has risen from five to twenty-one different dossiers. Client and employee documentation, who have either visited the open house or worked on the property in some capacity since the letter's discovery. Turns out, there were two more employees who handled the mansion directly, aside from Cooper and Isabella. Christian Sai, the realty specialist, and Mark Julius Jambori, the estate appraiser. This sea guy, he was in custody just the other day. Really? Sir John has been looking for him. He stopped reporting to work a few weeks ago. Are you sure it's the same person? Yep, this is him. Folks at the precinct said they went to his house after a noise complaint. Well, look here, thank you so much for the two bits. Oh, thank you so much. I really hope that life turns slightly more relaxing for you. <sighs> I'm so sorry that you're stressed out at the moment. Thank you for the bits. Really appreciate it. They found him just acting all crazy. Had to take him in when he started getting violent. He kept screaming about... a woman. Immediately she stiffens. I don't want to bring it up or imply a connection to Isabella's story, but that's exactly what happened. It was driving the guards mad, but he didn't last too long in there. A few hours in and he just started bashing his own head against the wall, and, well... <gasps> Suspicions! It was messy, to say the least. Oh, no. We had no idea. Is he... is he okay? HR just marked him as AWOL because none of their calls would get through. He's in the hospital right now. I heard they're putting him into a psychiatric ward as soon as he recovers. He's still a bit... unstable. Jean-Marie, on the other hand, in the employee file notes that his date of leaving is, and even when his final payment had been given, along with it, was a letter to his family about the appraiser being found dead in the office. Communication is hush-hush, and there's a mention of compensation if they don't talk about it to the media. Inspector Abigail has often scolded me for not reading the reports on a regular basis, but I try to keep up to date as much as I can. When I do, I make sure I'm aware of the gist of what's going on in my city. This? This never reaches the police's ears or the health and safety executive. Do you know about this guy? One glance at her says everything. They've hidden it from the media. They've kept it from the police. It's not surprising this will also be a secret from someone of Isabella's position in the company. Fuck. He... Rose was looking for him. Last week. We haven't heard anything from him either. Until... Until now. They never mentioned this to us. Business going under and someone dies while working here? Of course they want to keep that quiet. It's bad publicity. This whole thing is just getting freakier by the minute. Nevertheless, I hand the files for Isabella to make co a copy of. The pages with their names, addresses, and contact numbers will do. We'll start with the ones who live within the city. Sometimes there are things you really can't just brush off as a mere coincidence. In my line of work, once a pattern pops up, it's only right to be suspicious. Especially the thing with Sai. It hits too close to the stuff my own friends have been telling me. Uh, all of this? 
It's considerably thinner than the one she brought in, yet somehow the way she hugs the folders close to herself makes it seem heavier. Like she's hanging on to it the same manner one would latch onto a lifeline. Only the noteworthy ones. And those not and those that might still be alive? Might. She doesn't need to know that. We can't check the outside contractors, but the guys with the direct connection to BRC and the people who attended the open house should be enough. We don't have time to see how everyone's doing, especially if... if what you said is true. For a second, she appears about to argue, but quickly decides against it and hides it away before anyone reads the question in her face. Then, in a too abrupt motion, she turns towards the copier and gets to work. Soon, a little machine's constant thrum fills the air around us, while I keep myself busy cleaning up the mess we've made. The lack of talk is awkward, to put it mildly, Disturbing at worst. I've gotten so used to letting her just babble away whenever it's just the two of us. I could tell, however. She wants to do more. She wants to fix this mess herself. And that desire makes her antsy. But at the same time, she's learning how not to be impulsive or stubborn. Exactly as I've told her yesterday before agreeing to any of this. Or maybe these so-called changes have always been with her. Dire situations have always pushed people to change, however, after all. Though seeing this happen in front of me only makes it difficult to find a proper thing to say. An atmosphere this tense and charged. What is left to us to talk about? Certainly not the news. What's worse is when you realise all of this in hindsight, right after you've already ran your mouth off. You know, for a house your company seems to be in a hurry to sell, they still made quite a fortune out of it. Look at this. One, two, three... <laughs> Six. Are you sure they're planning to give your entire share for this? This isn't a small amount, especially given the usual cut. And their accounting department isn't in the greatest shape either. Even if they don't... Even if they don't, it's not like someone still needs it. And there's the reason why people don't let me talk. Silence once again descends throughout the room, denser compared to the ones we've shared tonight. Behind me, I can still hear her movements, sharp and precise while she feeds the originals to the machine. Then with one last click, little all of it stops. Her feet shuffle lightly against the floor when she moves away. Something creaks softly, probably the table, as she settles her weight against its side. By this time, an apology is already at the tip of my tongue, but... Bell, I... Papa's... Papa's gone, Ash. Oh, sweetie. Oh, Isabella. I'm so sorry. And then those scant few seconds, everything between us shifts as the gravity of her words sinks. Right then and there, something harsh and immovable rises between us. Death is something I'm familiar with. Almost ten years in the police force, and it's impossible not to get acquainted with it. But this? This is different from those dead bodies we examined in forensics. A far cry from the victims we found in a bad investigation. Those I could easily distance myself from. No emotional attachments, no need for pretenses. Yet somehow, somehow I still find myself grasping for things to tell her. Any words of comfort that'll dull the pain. Buzz even without looking at her, her grief feels palpable enough, her pain, an immutable weight hanging over us. So gently I offer. When? Huh? When what? Your... your dad. I mean, when did you find out? She doesn't answer. Not immediately, anyway. For a long moment, the hush simply stretches out before us, spanning across the seconds we let pass when, while we're both simply standing there, waiting. Eventually, she exhales. Lightly, muted though I might have missed it, had I not been paying attention to her every movement. Yesterday, around three in the afternoon there, Mama called. She, she told me you passed away in his sleep, and I guess... I guess I can take comfort in that, huh? But Papa wasn't in any pain when... She trails off, 
releases another rag of breath underneath her chuckles. Each one's mirthless, heavy with nothing but sorrow. Then she falters into silence, and for all my attempts at lightening her burden, I'm suddenly at a loss. Reassurances would, could only do so much, when her only reason for staying here has suddenly been taken from her, a hope yanked from under her feet right when it was generously given. And without that, without the one person who pushes her to endure, these, all of the shit we're going through, she's going through, means nothing but a struggle. What does one say to a person fraying at the edges, slowly wearing thin and breaking? Are words even enough? What right do I have, anyway? I cannot give her anything, apart from lies that change me as a person, and affections she may or may not even want for herself. Yes, she really does need a hug. Oh. Because no matter how easily, how easy she has wormed herself into our lives, how mutable her presence has become, her own heart will always yearn for something else. For home. Tell me about him. Huh? About what? Your dad. Tell me about him. Anything. Just... just talk. Say anything you want. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll listen. Good... good Ashton! Silence again, as if she's teasing, testing the weight of my... weight of my question. What purpose it is. For a reason even I can't say now. After a while, though, she starts. Reluctantly, her voice hitching, faltering and stumbling on each syllable as she chooses her words. A rough start, but soon it steadies. And along with it, to keep company the stories from childhood and memories she's fond of. Are the tears. Oh, sweetie. Despite this, in spite of the grief choking her words off, the hurt closing her throat and the sobs racking her life form, she continues. Like the mere act of speaking is a relief in itself. A release. She tells me of her father, the very person who named her, how she looked up to him, how she was a bit of a tomboy growing up in her attempts to imitate him, and how the man encouraged her to pursue what she really wanted. Perhaps even the only thing she ever did for herself, having grown up not wanting anything more than to put food on their tables. He told me I don't have to listen to them. That I can do what I want. Every day, he'd wake up at four, Ash. Because he'd earn more that way. And every time, every single time, he'd give them to me. Whatever extra he earned, he'd hand them all. So that I'd have something to use for my paintings. And you know what? Back home, just a good tube of paint cost almost as much as what we spent for food the whole day. But he'd always set something aside. He told me he wanted to see my paintings in a museum one day. She pours all of it out. Every little thing she loved and admired about him. Like this. It's easy to see why she's gone to such great lengths for him. Why she abandoned her dreams. Why she went against his wishes, just to grant him another chance at life. Others will say it's her warmth that draws people to her. Or her cheer. Neither are wrong, but neither is the whole truth to her either. Because those who have never bothered to look beyond the surface will never see it. See her. See someone earnest, someone who has always meant well, despite her underlying stubbornness. This show, this show, uh, uh, feels. This is how she loves. Warm, steadfast, unflinching. You never meet many people like her. Not in my line of work. Not with the kind of people I've had to deal with. Always with something to hide. Always with something to lie about. Eventually, when you run across too many of them, you change. You become like them. In many ways. For a lot of reasons. She's... She's the kind of person I want to be and around with made me feel I'm still worth something. He didn't want me to leave. Said, begged. I could finish my studies first. In the end, I couldn't even... I couldn't even grant him that one request. I'm a terrible daughter. 
aren't I? Oh, sweetie. I'm a pest daughter. You're not. Huh? You're not. I can't speak for your dad. I haven't even met the man. But I know you're not. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. The remark just came out. Now I'm stringing all these together as I go. For one th but one thing is certain. None of what I'm about to say is a lie. The Isabella I know is a total klutz, but I've never seen anyone work as hard as she does. She's the type who wears her heart on her sleeve. Though it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always in the right place. She's intimidated by a lot of stuff, but she knows how to appreciate the smallest things in life. Frankly, you've caused us no small amount of trouble since you barged into our lives. But when I'm with you, when I'm with you, all of my worries seem trivial. He has already crept up my face from the ho this whole thing is about to take registers. Before I blurt out the rest of it, to clear feelings I'm not even ready to reveal to anyone, much less to her. My hand comes up to smother the rest of it. Ash, stop! Though embarrassment quickly takes the reins before I can complete, clamp my, completely clamp my mouth shut. And I'm pretty sure Zach and Becca think the same way. You have a nasty way of growing on people like that, and... You know what? God damn it, Ash! We got everything we needed in here. I'll just wipe the security recordings and we're good to go. No! St stop it! While I'm at it, you... You better wipe the snot off your face. And you don't look very nice when you're balding like that. God fucking damn it, Ashton! Hastily, I gather everything. The personnel files, client documents, sales agreements and contracts. Anything my hands could reach. In record time, all of it has been stacked in a neat pile, ready for storage. I'm heading for the records room not a few seconds later. Wherever that is. Should be an easy find, unless this place is a maze of some sort, which I highly doubt. Still beats staying here and seeing the look on her face. Crap. Really, her anger's still bearable. I could take that. Including the glower she sends my way. So, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll go get the security videos and put these back where you pulled them from. Man, these, these are heavy, you know? <laughs> Ash, it's just paper. You don't even know where I... Oh, no, I can, I can handle this. Easy as pie. And, uh... Yeah, security cams, tapes, videos, cams. So goddamn awkward. You had one job, Ash. Yeah, I'm off. A rejection at this point? Maybe. Maybe not yet. Getting the files back to VLC's archive is, in, is a cinch. The document's back in their proper places. I lock the door behind me, tugging it twice to make sure. Now, on to the next order of business. Moving the evidence of our little excursion in here. Or at the very least, the parts showing what we've been doing in the past hour. Can't have our faces fastened on security footage, showing us breaking the law as it were. Going to have to wipe the data from Isabella's card access entries too. Surprisingly, finding that security room proves a breeze. What will be tricky is getting inside. The fact that no one has walked out during the whole time we've been here means the room is either empty or the security sound asleep. Banking more in the former. They're cutting corners and firing agents. I have no doubt that they fired the guy stationed here. If they have anyone watching the monitors in the first place. It's a rather common thing for establishments. Just leave security recording indefinitely and only check the footage if something actually happens. Just to check, I press my ears against the door, listening for a sign of anyone occupying the room. After a long minute and nothing, I give the knob a few rattles. Standard lock and key. Should be easy enough to pick. We have lock pick sets, but those are only used if necessary, and with a search warrant. Even then, it's a skill set rarely needed. Subtlety isn't on a cop's priority if they have the authority to search the premises. Bolt cutters and brute force are the favoured methods. If those fail, we call a locksmith. Me, I prefer the good old hairpin trick when those options aren't available. Besides, they're easy to hide and store for emergencies. Running my hand through my hair, I pull, out, I pull a pair of body, uh, bobby pins. Two of these and I can just open any standard lock. One makes a lever and the other makes a handle. I won't call it a complex skill, but it certainly takes time and a lot of practice to successfully pick a lock. 
one thing I've learned from Skyrim. <laughs> Good thing I've practiced with them for a bit in my college years. I learned more than they're accessible and standard issue for a law enforcement officer. We'll wiggle here and I'll click there. And I managed to seize all the pins and the locking me mechanism soon enough. And the slight turn of the knob, the security room's ripe for the picking. The room's odour hits me first. A sharp, nauseating stench, as if someone has accidentally spilled a gallon of bleach in the room. When was the last time they opened this place? Ugh, this place smells awful. Jesus, it's worse than the forensics lab on a bad day. It's probably because of a badly botched effort to clean this place up. Even in the dark, I can spy dark stains on the walls. I really don't have the time to try and play th is this ketchup or soda right now, but I have this strange gut feeling who the mess might belong to. As expected, no security personnel mans the office CCTV pro controls, and the standalone DVR setup is open for anyone. Normally I'd have to heap of uh, things to say about the sloppy security setup, setup. But right now, their negligence makes the whole task of erasing evidence easier. No fuss, no muss. The next one should be the access card data. Hopefully getting into their computer won't be too much of a hassle. Everything's up to now has been smooth sailing. There have been hiccups, I'll give it that. Though it does nothing to damp the good mood I'm in. Once I shift my attention to the machine sitting next to the DVR's setup, all but swiftly evaporates. I'm no computer buff, I can definitely recognize more than one decade old. Simply looking at it makes me feel younger. With a heavy sigh, I power it up and mentally prepare myself for a slow slug. So apparently remains an understatement here. It takes a whole three minutes for a thing to start up. The OS hasn't even started loading, and in my boredom I start inspecting the live feeds from the cams. Only two work. One for the out view outside, everything seems to be in order there, and the other for the main workplace where it's a fleeting glimpse, a cursory glance, but the sight of it stops me. The image is a bit blurry. I'm standing there, right in the middle of the room, with one of the cubicles. I can make out the form of a What the hell is Don't get too far into that line of thought. In a few seconds after my words have slipped out that any sort of warning, while I'm still trying to make sense of what it is, the figure moves. A moment of paralysis hits me when she stops right in front of the camera. Like a damn rookie, I still go into the face of danger. I definitely haven't been trained to handle the supernatural. And this is one, isn't it? And... Oh, fuck. Her eyes bore into me, the malice in them piercing. Even beyond the screen, it's enough to make me go numb. Only the mug crashing to the floor when my hand accidentally takes a swipe at it, snaps me out of the trance, reminding me that I'm not the only one here. Isabella. Seems she hasn't noticed anything. Am I the only one seeing this? In any case, whatever's happening, I have to get her out. Gathering my wits, I quickly reach for my phone. It takes all but two seconds before she answers, but there's no time for relief. Get out of there. What? What are you- Out. Get out. I'll meet you in the elevator. Just- You're creeping me out, Ash. Just get yourself out of that place, now! Without second thought, I back away from the controls, from the room, ready to be done with this place. Sorry, just a second. Minor technical hiccup. There we go, my apologies. But before my foot even moves, she disappears. Son of a- Oh fuck, no! No, 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 no. Instinct instantly takes over and my hand quickly reaches for the gun at my side. Only to meet empty air. A mistake that cost me a few precious seconds, while the paperwork I've brought with me threatens to scatter everywhere at the same time. Gathering everything and myself once more, with no weapons to protect myself, my sense of self-preservation kicks in and I lunge towards the door. I sprint across the office without daring to look back. Isabella's already waiting in front of the elevators by the time I make it out to her, of their office. Where I crease their brows upon glancing at me, but I don't have time to answer the question in her eyes. 
As soon as I reach her, I grab her arm, practically throw the two of us into the open elevator, and slam the button from the ground floor. A sigh of relief escapes me from where the elevator starts its descent. The clicking noise fades off in the distance. Beside me, Isabella shifts, moving the stack of papers under her arm while she takes in my appearance. Concerns in her eyes, though all I offer her is a small gesture of my hand while I can attempt to compose myself. Breathe. In. Out. Why are we in such a hurry? We... we need to get out of this place. Did you get everything? Yeah, it's all here. But really, you, you don't look too good. What's wrong, Ash? I'll be fine. Just... I was... in the security room. There's... from the monitors. There was a fucking... The rest of what I'm about to say dies on my tongue when the elevator stops and the doors open too. There's a moment's pause while we both take in our surroundings. Confusion's understandably there. Oh, come on! They should just replace this whole thing! No. No, I'm quite sure I pressed for the ground floor. Right? But it's just as Isabella said. The elevator always did have problems when I visited her in the past. Often, she becomes so angry whenever we try to get to her floor, and she'll have to repeatedly smash the button for the elevator to even move. I was always good for a laugh. I wasn't wor too worried then. Now, from the distance, beyond the light's reach, the noise echoes in my ears along with the rapid pounding in my chest. Isabella stiffens and her eyes grow wide at the sound. Gingerly, she reaches up to grab the hem of my sleeve and grips it. Hard. Tight enough for her finger fingernails to dig through. Her eyes search wildly for the source of the sound, while I stand protectively in front of her. Ash, did, did you hear that? Anyone there? I can hear you moving from here. Show yourself! No response. No response, only the soft sound of something, scurrying around the floor and the walls in slow, deliberate movements. Faint, but still audible enough in this hush. Until it stops. It's your waifu. We need to go, Ash. We have to. And then... This time I'm certain it isn't my imagination. Against my training, my whole body freezes. Hands stiff silly mid-press and the buttons, eyes growing wide while waiting for any sort of movement from further back, and the strained for the source of the sound. Can't even offer Isabella any reassurances. Much as I hate to admit it, dread has seeped to every nerve in my body. And the bastard elevator still won't work. This isn't in my fucking training manual. Damn right! Ash, Ash, we need to leave. I know that sound. Ash, please, get the elevator! Another series of shuffling against the ground, a laughter, and all of a sudden, she's just there. Like a twisted spider, she stares at us. A look of hunger in her eyes and venom in her twisted manner, she smiles. Okay, that is genuinely one of the creepiest fucking things I've ever seen. She's, no. Just go away. At least she has well earned where damn flies have been dropped right into the spider's web. Ashton! Damn it! Damn it! Without warning, she moves, mocking me with each unhurried course she takes, knowing I'm at her mercy. Fucking hell! Ashton, the door! The door! Our lives are in the hands of a crummy elevator, literally hanging between life and death. We're not going to die here. Not in a damn elevator. Oh, fuck. Ah! Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck! Oh, God! Ah, no, no. That is genuinely one of, like, one of my absolute worst nightmares. Just, no, 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 no. As if a divine power has heard me swearing up a storm in my head, the door closed just as that thing looms near. Soon the elevator, the blasted thing, is heading up. Isabella's knees buckle in relief, in two ticks she's hugging herself without any care for the mess of papers and folders she has dropped on the floor in her panic. She draws in one ragged breath after another, 
each one brimming with nothing but relief. And this, this is the most I've been tired in my whole damn life. Not during training when my superior first asked me to drop a hundred, not after a stakeout, but after f smashing a fucking elevator door repeatedly. I slumped to the ground beside her, worn out, but I don't let myself feel relief again, not until we're out of here. Isabella seems to be of the same mind as she looks at me. Still, I find myself sharing a shaky laugh with her. We're... we're okay. We're fine. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Alive. Fuck, we should have taken the goddamn stairs. Twice I've seen it. Thrice if I include the party. Unless I'm tripping balls without realizing it, there's no doubt in my mind that this is actually happening. I don't want to believe it. But with the truth staring at me in the face, it'd be stupidly to deny the reality of the matter. Finally! <laughs> oh boy, and with that bomb dropped and that elevator drop, I think I'm going to call it a night here. So, finally, Ash got maybe half a step closer to confessing his feelings for Isabella. He actually comforted her in a time of need, which was really, really sweet little cutscenes. Such feels. So many feels. And probably one of the things that's actually creeped me the most out of this game just that visuals just no it's just so much no for me um but we'll have to see next week how ashton's story continues so thank you all so much for joining me this evening i hope you all enjoyed the stream oh boy <laughs> the funny thing is my room's completely pitch black so i've been playing this in the dark because i haven't been bothered to get up and turn the lights on so i'm looking forward to doing that again <laughs> so Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. Um, if you've enjoyed the show so far and you'd like to see more, consider hitting that follow button. We would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite. And I will see you all on Friday. Uh, just with how laggy things were for Dead by Daylight, I have a feeling I'm going to hold off streaming that. For now, um, things were running a bit smoother with Darkest Dungeon. And that's a game where we will have to probably do a bit more grinding to up people's levels. So I'll probably be doing that on Friday instead of Dead by Daylight. So I look forward to seeing all of you for uh, Darkest Dungeon on Friday. I might have to cut it a little bit early and just keep it to two hours um, because I have to do something afterwards. But we'll play it by ear and see what comes up. So I look forward to seeing all of you guys on Friday for more Darkest Dungeon, more exploration, more cleaning up of our ancestors' mess. But I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of the week. Do have and try your best to beat the heat as best you can. Um, thankfully, it's not too bad in London at the moment, but I know for many of you around the world, it's still insufferable. So I hope it's good and you manage to enjoy the rest of your week. So thank you all so much for joining me this evening. And as always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And as always, Stay wicked and wonderful. Good night, guys. <laughs>